Good evening, everyone. I am uh, Dimitrios Kostopoulos, co-founder of Hands-On Seminars, and I would like to welcome everyone to tonight's uh, uh, webinar. Um, it is going to be a very interesting and interactive session. Uh, and uh, tonight, uh, uh, not only uh, we will be discussing about a very, very interesting uh, uh, manual therapy technique, uh, uh, called a uh, uh, muscle energy technique that many of you might be uh, familiar with. Uh, muscle energy is one of the components that we teach in the uh, Master Certification of uh, Manual Therapy uh, program. All of our uh, uh, courses include components of uh, uh, muscle energy technique. Uh, and uh, tonight we will discuss muscle energy as it pertains uh, to shoulder pathology, but we'll give you some general idea um, a, a, about uh, uh, the technique itself and some of its uh, concepts. Um, uh, also, uh, in terms of uh, functionality of the system, I would like to point out to all of you that on the right-hand side um, you have uh, uh, a, a hand that you can click on and raise your hand to ask a question. In that case, I will unmute your microphone and uh, you can ask uh, the question, or otherwise you may type your questions under the questions panel on the right-hand side, and I will make sure that today's presenter will get a hold of your question, and she will be able to um, uh, answer your questions. So I am uh, delighted to present to you senior faculty of uh, hands-on seminars, uh, Janelle Allen. Uh, Janelle is, uh, not only has uh, a master's degree in uh, uh, physical therapy, but also is an NCMT graduate and certified um, uh, senior faculty of hands-on seminars. And as of uh, the beginning of this year, Janelle is uh, uh, also the uh, uh, Dean of Student Affairs, of uh, Vice President actually of Student Affairs of uh, uh, hands-on seminars. And uh, perhaps she has worked with uh, uh, many of you uh, uh, in your um, uh, student assignments as you go through the Master's Certification in Manual Therapy program. Uh, Janelle, I would like to uh, welcome you tonight. And uh, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. And, and, and how's the weather up in Rochester? It's a little cold. Not, not quite snowing yet. So. You, you, you guys were, were, were lucky you did not get hit that much uh, yeah. from the hurricane as we got uh, downstate. Yeah, we have nothing. <laughs> So, thanks, no thanks, right? So. No thanks. I'll take the snow. <laughs> I gotcha. So, uh, listen, I'm going to give you controls here so uh, you can start uh, uh, talking to us. Um, so, very good. You can take controls and uh, uh, we can okay. see you now. I just And you can see my screen? Perfect. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, welcome everybody. I'd like to talk to you about muscle energy technique for shoulder pathology. Um, and let's go to the so what is muscle energy technique? Again, it is a manual therapeutic procedure involving contraction of a muscle in a controlled direction. And this can vary in, in, in its meaning in diff many different ways. There are many um, theorists that have have introduced and, and worked on muscle energy technique over, over the years. And in our seminars, we talk about um, a different different variety of them. Carl Levitt, Yanda, Evan, uh, a few of the different theorists that have gone and, and created their own style and theories of muscle energy technique. And I know and when I went to school, we called it contract, relax. <clears throat> excuse me, or antagonist to fact relax. In in the old school that was more of a TNF style, but but the the um, the similarities are we, we can't um, can't differ from the similarities. So many people know it as in fact relax and and again um, the understanding is very similar. Um, and again For many of you, you would probably want to know why would I want to use muscle energy technique. 
um, again, to help lengthen the shortened muscle, strengthen a weak muscle, help decrease local edema, or help mobilize the joints with decreased mobility. And again, the, the different uses of muscle and these techniques and these different clinical uses vary depending on what your um, patient scenario and patient case study might be. And in the seminars, we talk about how we go about lengthening the shortened muscle, strengthening the weak muscle, or again, mobilizing the joint with decreased mobility. So depending on which theory or theorist you apply your technique by will depend on your level of intensity of contraction. Do I start at the barrier? Do I start before the barrier? Do I stretch into the barrier? Depends on which uh, clinical use you're using this for. Um, Again, there are different types of, of muscle energy techniques. Do we want to um, um, contract either the, the muscle we are treating? Do we want to contract the antagonistic muscle to the one we are treating? Again, this is going to vary whether you have an acute situation or chronic situation. Do we have fibrotic tissue? These are all different areas of clinical use and depending on which type of patient we have will depend on which type of muscle energy technique we want to use. And again, these are all talked about in the seminars in much more detail. And again, these theories vary on the levels of intensity of contraction. Do we utilize the stretch or do we move just to the barrier? Again, there are different theorists that believe we should utilize the stretch. Some don't believe we should the, the amount of contraction or the length of contraction is pretty similar in the different theories. Um, again, amongst all the different theorists, this has been looked at, this has been researched as to mm -hmm. how long we should hold it. Five seconds, seven seconds, ten seconds, even up to twenty seconds. This has all been, been researched throughout the year. Should we stretch? Should we not stretch? And again, this has been researched as to whether this will help lengthen the muscle. Will this induce a stretch reflex? Depending on your clinical case will depend on whether you need to stretch, not stretch, or move to the barrier. Again, are we utilizing this for soft tissue technique? Are we utilizing this for a joint mobilization? So again, muscle energy techniques utilize it or, or is used for soft tissue and for joint mobility. Some people believe that muscle energy technique is also helpful in, in uh, uh, using it prior to a high velocity thrust or manipulation. Again, these, um, this understanding is, is been challenged throughout the years as to whether you need to use the muscle energy technique prior to the manipulation or whether it, it's not needed. So what I've done is created a, a, a case study and this is a, actually a patient of mine that is still coming to me. Um, she's in her end, end stage of, of therapy. Um, Prior to her surgery, she came to me. She had a, a very large bone spur in her shoulder, and so she had an acromioplasty and removal of the bone spur. And coming to me, um, her biggest complaint was she had pain reaching up, pain reaching behind her back, and pain reaching behind her head. And originally, she had about 130 degrees of flexion. 40 degrees of external rotation and 60 degrees of internal rotation, 140 degrees of reduction, all with pain at end rate. Now in the shoulder specifically, we all know that external rotation is probably one of the hardest um, motions to achieve, especially after shoulder surgery. And I do find that I utilize muscle energy techniques a lot, especially in post-shoulder surgeries, especially if 
trying to achieve external rotation. And again, the external rotation is, is the, the type of movement that's going to impinge on the subacromial space the most. And even with utilizing um, other soft tissue techniques, such as my, my trigger point technique, maybe some strain counter strain, I do find that muscle energy technique specifically in the shoulder um, is very helpful for that external rotation and internal rotation also. A lot of people, and I just had a, um, an email sent to me that somebody was struggling quite a bit with both and shoulder. And so the one thing I suggest was, are you really utilizing a good muscle energy technique? And, and especially in, in, in your patient, um, the, the control that you have when you do a muscle energy technique is critical. And it's one of the reasons why muscle energy techniques might not be successful. And again, so that varying level of intensity, of intensity has to be um, monitored very closely. So with this patient, I did utilize the trigger, um, trigger point relief, the triple, trigger points that she had for subscapularis, lat dorsi, tricep, intraspinatus, interchase, major, and, and minor. And so my treatment for her included, again, my trigger point treatment, the muscle energy technique for the external and internal rotation muscle groups. And after implementing these treatments, she had an increase of in, um, internal rotation range of motion of 80, external rotation of 70, um, with very little pain and, and very little functional limitation. At this point, she has full range of motion issues behind her back, and about 75 to 80% improved flexion range of motion, um, with very little um, pain at the top of the shoulder. And, and this patient is a little bit older, and so um, she did have a little bit of, of fear with me stretching her. And I find that doing a muscle energy technique helps relax that patient a little bit more also. Um, instead of going into a full high intensity type stretch, again, that muscle energy technique helps to relax the muscle, and it gets the muscle prepared a lot better for a stretch. And it eases that area of, of the joint much better than just doing a regular plain stretch. So what do we see with, with muscle energy techniques? So again, researchers such as Carl Levitt have reported the use of muscle energy techniques to be helpful in relieving mild partial trigger points. And this is key when, when we combine technique of, of mild muscle trigger points, the pressure technique, and also utilizing a muscle technique, muscle energy technique at the same time. So not only can we help relieve mild muscle trigger points just with the use of muscle energy technique, but we can actually use them in conjunction with each other, which makes it a much better, much more improved technique with, with your pressure technique of of a mild muscle trigger point release by utilizing the isometric contraction also. Also, muscle energy techniques has a large effect on the range of motion of a joint. So again, if we're using muscle energy techniques to help mobilize a joint, we vary this in, in the fact that we don't utilize a stretch um, with with the joint technique as much as we might think about using a stretch with um, the myofascial um, tissue. Again, whether your intention is to affect the soft tissue or the joint, the muscle energy technique will inadvertently have an effect on both. So whether your, your um, specific technique is to say, OK, I'm going to help relax the step step, help relax the lat dorsi, and I'm going to do an isometric contraction to help with those muscles and help press those muscles. Again, inadvertently, you will have an effect on the joint itself. And this helps to, to mobilize the joint in addition to help lengthen the muscle itself. And again, muscle energy technique has an effect on the stretch powers of the muscle. 
So the, the understanding of what the muscle under these techniques has on the actual muscle fiber is still in question. But what has been found is that the, the tolerance of the muscle fiber itself is, is much more tolerable with the stretch after using the muscle energy technique. So your patients are going to find it to be a lot more comfortable to stretch into these um, very um, difficult frames of motion, such as internal and external rotation. Um, and this is extremely helpful, especially in your frozen shoulders, your true adhesive capsulitis patients, um, post-surgical, again, who have been immobilized for, for four weeks, maybe up to six weeks, depending on their situation. So, again, we look at the keys to, to a successful muscle energy technique. And again, the appropriate amount of effort utilizing the isometric contraction. Again, isometric contraction is just one of the styles of muscle energy techniques we have. We also have isotonic, uh, isolytic, depending, again, on the situation. The isometric contraction, again, being utilized for stretching or lengthening um, a shortened muscle. But again, if we don't hone in on the specific muscle that we are trying to treat, we, we can, um, may involve other muscles that we don't want to involve. We might induce a stretch reflex that, that will then hinder our ability to stretch the muscle. And again, if we, if we um, have too much contraction uh, or too much effort of the patient onto the isometric contraction, then that can induce pain, again, the stretch reflex, and that will negate the, the relaxation that we're, that we're looking for. The barrier and the understanding of the barrier is, is one of the key components also. What's important about the barrier is this lets us know where we need to start our contraction, because, again, there are different theories as to whether we need to start before the barrier, after the barrier. This depends on whether the uh, situation is acute or more chronic. But not only is the barrier important when we start the technique, but the barrier is also important when we go to the new movement or when we move to the new, to the new barrier to start with the, the next contraction. And we want to feel for the barrier, what kind of barrier it is. This will lead us to, to finding out how far we can push that movement. Comfort level wise also, the, the patient will, will start to uh, go into a muscle spasm and start resistance if that uh, movement is painful. So if that barrier is, is a little bit um, painful and range, now your technique will, will be negated again because of that stress reflex or muscle spasm that could occur. And again, utilizing the different types of muscle energy techniques for different patient scenarios is key also. Understanding are we acute, chronic, um, more fibrotic tissue will, will lead us to figuring out, do we want to use more of an isometric contraction, an isotonic contraction, an isolytic contraction? Do we want to utilize a stretch? Again, there are different theories as to whether we should or shouldn't utilize the stretch. And are we using this for a joint, which will automatically tell us whether we should or shouldn't use a stretch after the technique. So with that uh, discussion. Um, uh, Janelle, I'm sure there will be some uh, questions from the attendees, but um, yes. um, one of the uh, things that um, I wanted to discuss uh, with you is that uh, if we see um, the, the time that um, um, the initial approaches for uh, muscle energy technique uh, were developed, there was more tendency to uh, produce 
uh, in order to have an effect to produce to, to provide a greater amount of force, um, yeah. a greater um, uh, uh, magnitude of an isometric contraction. And we see that as the approaches um, uh, evolve, we have uh, uh, you know less and less uh, type of uh, uh, degree of contraction. Um, how, how much of clinical significance do you see in, in the variation of, uh, of, of force on that? Um, and again, I, I will utilize that depending on if I have more of an acute or chronic type of situation. And also this is dependent on the size of the muscle also. You know, if you have a, a muscle that is smaller, say in, your, in more the neck muscles, maybe your, your forearm muscles, compared to a larger muscle in, in, in the hamstrings or the quads will depend on how much force I will utilize also. Um, again, um, how much force will depend on, on where I'm at in the stage of the acuteness or chronicity. So I will vary my, my force and contraction based specifically on that particular patient. Um, again, if I thought um, a patient more of a shoulder situation, I tend to not have them contract as forcefully. I wouldn't go 100% like Yonda um, felt that we should go. I would probably go more of that 25, no more than 30%. That Levitt felt that right. was appropriate. So your smaller muscles will be more of a Levitt's approach where, with the 25%. Um, especially, you know, a few weeks post-surgical. Um, if we've got more of the frozen shoulder issue where somebody comes into you six, nine months after this has been going on and they haven't moved their shoulder at all, we know that this is a true adhesive capsulitis with fibrotic tissue, then to go a little bit more forceful with the understanding that, yeah, there is going to be some soreness because we have to break up that fibrotic tissue. We utilize that isolated technique um, where we have much more force occurring in the or in the fashion. So, um, you know, the, there will be some soreness afterwards, but um, in order to break up that fibroid tissue in an adhesive capsulated situation, it is more necessary right. to, to do that. Um, how do you uh, integrate, how do you see the integration of um, uh, muscle energy technique? And, and I'm going to use two examples. Um, uh, the example of integration of muscle energy with uh, myofascial trigger point therapy, both being more of soft tissue type of uh, uh, techniques, uh, and then the integration of muscle energy technique with um, uh, manipulation, mobilization, manipulation type of techniques, meaning right. one more soft tissue, the other more joint type of uh, uh, approach. Right. And I, I do find that um, utilizing the muscle energy technique in a, in, in a very small contraction, isometric, isometric contraction, while doing that pressure technique, because there are, there are a certain number of fibers that are still in a normal range of, of motion, or, or normal length tension ratio, I'm sorry. And so there's, there's a certain number of muscle fibers that, are, that contain a contract or not, and a certain number of muscle fibers that are no, at the normal length tension ratio. And so there's enough muscle fibers at that normal length tension ratio in which you can utilize an isometric contraction to help relax those those fibers that do contain the contract or not. So especially if you're finding it difficult to get that relaxation from a pressure technique from, from the mild fossil trigger point release, utilize a small amount of isometric contraction, again, no more than 20-25%, to help with the, the, the technique of, of the pressure technique. And then in conjunction with the, the mobilization, I find that I, I do a, a, a muscle energy technique 
and then I'll go to a mobilization for internal or external rotation, or even just a simple interior glide of the of the shoulder, and and I can get a lot more movement because now that that joint has has more mobility in it, has more stretch. Because again, we're not only affecting the muscle, but we're also affecting um, ligaments and the tendons. So the non-contractile tissue is then also affected. So now I have a much greater ability to mobilize the joint after utilizing the muscle and the technique. I see. That's um, that's that's definitely uh, very important, and and um, uh, I I can see the use, and I'm I'm using combination of of uh, muscle energy mm -hmm. technique pretty much with m many many other techniques. Uh, yeah. Even even I see a tremendous benefit with uh, um, thrust manipulation. Um, especially those uh, uh, students who, those of you who are uh, students uh, of hands-on seminars in the MCMT program, you know that we teach you the barrier concept. And uh, uh, something uh, interesting here is that muscle energy technique can uh, uh, bring um, uh, this, uh, uh, can bring the joint uh, into that very specific uh, area uh, that we like to work uh, in between the um, uh, physiological and anatomical barriers uh, of um, uh, uh, the joint. Um, so that is w one of the few techniques that can help you reach that and, and it's definitely um, very, very important. Do you give uh, uh, patients, do you teach them how to do this at home as a home exercise program? Um, I, I usually don't. Um, I, I tend not to. Um, again, I, 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 I do feel that um, it depends on their, well, it would depend on their acuteness too, but um, I don't feel that they have enough control over it. I'd like to do it. Personally, I just like to do it in the clinic. I, mm -hmm. Especially with an internal and external rotation. And, and if I'm, but if they're a little bit more chronic, I can see absolutely having them, you know, for example, get up against the door frame, you know, pushing into internal rotation, stretching into external rotation. Um, as long as they can control how much effort they put into it. And that's the key to anything. Because I'll, I'll even teach my patients how to do um, myofascial trigger point resistance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, but again, with even with that, the key for education. Because I don't want my patients to go into too much effort. Um, and I don't want them going into excessive amount of, of, of contraction um, that could, again, induce a stress reflex or cause irritation in the joint and in the muscle that's already irritated. Um, uh, uh, Janelle, um, let's yeah. make a clarification. Um, one of the attendees uh, um, is asking a question, which I, I, I know that that you, allow, you, you talked about that and, 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 and indeed that this is the way we teach it in our seminars, but we want to clarify that for uh, uh, Rachel. Um, the question, she says that um, another seminar I attended made a differentiating point between acute and chronic conditions when utilizing muscle energy technique. For acute cases, 20-30% of maximum contraction from patient uh -huh. is better, and for chronic cases, 50% works. Also, if the agonist hurts to move, wouldn't it be logical to let the antagonist contract? So this is uh, a, a question from Rochelle. So let's elaborate a little bit on this. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, let's go for the acute. Um, as far as utilizing, um, what, is, what was the question, 25% of a contraction? She says 20 to 30% for oh. acute 
and yeah. for chronic, 50 percent. You can, you know, again, Yonder even talks about 100 um, percent of a, of a contraction for more of a chronic, for a chronic issue. And even Leon Chapin talks about utilizing Yonder's 100 percent contraction for more of a chronic issue. Um, also, um, and what was the third? No, and she says, if the agonist hurts the move, oh, the agonist, logical yeah. to use the antagonist. Right. So, for example, if, if your subscap is, is too irritable, and so we would go into reciprocal inhibition and utilize the infraspinatus um, to, to help go into external location yeah. as opposed to utilizing the subscap as a lat dorsi, absolutely. So this is more of a the reciprocal addition in order to to achieve the same goal without aggravating or irritating the muscle that you are treating. Okay. Uh, actually, Rochelle, let me um, uh, also add that to uh, what Janelle uh, said. I mean, uh, repeat basically what Janelle said, but in a different way. Um, we do a similar type of classification. We classify our patients in um, acute, uh, uh, subacute, and, and, and chronic, right? And it, it, we fit a variety of manual therapy techniques within these categories. Um, for example, uh, in an acute type of situation, we will have the tendency to use uh, more of a strain, counter-strain technique and to use the muscle energy technique of the milder type, uh, more of a uh, avianth type of uh, uh, approach. Then when we're talking about a subacute type of uh, problem, that is where you can start incorporating a little bit more aggressive myofascial trigger point therapy. You can incorporate for sure um, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, some muscle energy technique, more of a Carol Levitt uh, type of style, and you can incorporate also some uh, mobilization. And because it is more of a subacute type of uh, case, you're going to use more, um, I would say, threes and, and uh, you know, twos and threes in terms of grades. Uh, if you did decide to use uh, in an acute case, some uh, mobilization may use grade ones. Uh, and then in a chronic kind of situation, yes, you can use more aggressive myofascial trigger point therapy. You can use um, a muscle energy technique more of a Yanda type of uh, style. And you can use in terms of uh, manipulation fours and fives. Uh, so we do use this type of classification model of of uh, acute, subacute, and chronic, and we fit the manual therapy techniques and and the aggressiveness of each technique within this model of acute, subacute, and chronic. So you'll get more of that information in the MCMT curriculum. Janelle, anything else yeah. uh, uh, to add from your side? Um. Again, um, depending on whether that patient is acute uh, or in that subchronic or subacute chronic type stage um, will also depend on whether we feel that a stretch might be applicable. Um, some theorists like Levitt believe that we go to the new barrier and we don't want to use a stretch. Again, he feels that there could be more of a stretch reflex. But when we talk about um, Somebody who's in more of the chronic type stage, um, Chaitel has taken all these theories and, 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 and written about all of them and, and, and theorized in his own manner that um, utilizing at least a 30 second stretch, like we talk about in NCMC courses, utilizing a 30 second mile fossil stretch is applicable in a more chronic case. So again, depending on where they are in those categories, um, bringing them to the new barrier might be appropriate. 
This is again a little more of a gentler technique. And then again, if we've got somebody who's more chronic, in order to get um, more lengthening of, of not only the contractile tissue, but the non-contractile tissue, and, and again, breaking up that fibrotic tissue and helping to lengthen those muscles with the myofascial trigger points, a stretch technique might be uh, beneficial and in, in utilized. And again, it is important to understand how, just how beneficial muscle energy technique is when treating myofascial trigger points in addition to the pressure techniques that we, that we teach in the courses. Excellent. Very good. Um, I um, don't um, see any other questions from anyone. Uh, again, if, if uh, somebody has uh, a question, this is um, your last chance <laughs> to ask it. Um, and, and while I'm giving uh, uh, a few minutes uh, to anyone who would like to ask uh, um, Janelle Allen a, a question, uh, I would just uh, like to take a quick uh, uh, moment. And uh, uh, those of you who have not uh, uh, seen uh, the uh, Black Friday deal special that Hanson Seminar gives, which is uh, the once a year largest discount that we give. We give a 25% discount of our individual courses, but also from the entire MCMT package. And you do not have to decide which course to take. You can make that decision uh, later on. Uh, this is the deepest discount that we give. We give it only once a year, and this is on Black Friday. And this year's Black Friday discount ends on Wednesday night. So it is uh, it ends tomorrow, uh, um, Wednesday, November 28th. So um, those of you who are uh, interested on this uh, special, uh, I strongly recommend that you um, uh, call the um, uh, 800 number, 888-767-5003. Uh, tomorrow morning, starting at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., um, so you can take advantage of this special. Yeah, and if you do not have this um, specific email, uh, actually, I can tell you how you can do it. You can go to our website, you can register for whatever program you want, and you can enter this code here, Turkey25. And if you enter this code, then automatically the system will provide you with the discount. So you can go ahead and uh, process your registration through the handsonseminars.com website and under uh, when you go to the checkout you can put Turkey25 to get your 25% discount and this ends on midnight on Wednesday night. So uh, Janelle, uh, anything else from your side? Uh, not unless anybody has any questions for me. Now, Janelle, I want to thank you uh, so much for um, uh, doing this today and, and uh, doing this presentation. Um, uh, it was very, very informative. Uh, and uh, uh, say uh, hello to everybody in the family. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Uh, stay safe. Uh, um, and I look forward to anybody who's going to be attending my classes. Um, we have a, 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 a large number of courses next year in a variety of different cities. So please look for a city close to you. Attend any courses that you can, and I guarantee uh, you will enjoy the classes. Um, I've had several people email me uh, personally um, saying how much they do enjoy the information. So um, I look forward to seeing anybody in any future courses. Excellent. Um, uh, well, you know something? Somebody, somebody asks a quick question, so we'll answer it. Uh, this person, uh, Gracia, uh, says that uh, they lost the first part of the, they missed the first part of the course. And how uh, many seconds do you use for the contraction in muscle and energy technique? And this person is joining us from Peru tonight. Oh, Peru, welcome! welcome. welcome. <laughs> I've been um, to Peru. I loved it. <laughs> Why do we have courses down there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
So she wants to know how many how many seconds we hold. Well, yes. the general consensus for how many seconds is anywhere from eight to ten seconds. They've done enough research, enough studies showing that anything less than than eight seconds does not relax the muscle fibers enough. And anything more than ten seconds isn't actually any more beneficial than doing it for about ten seconds. Okay. But right. but, uh, but I will say but. Um, Levitt felt that instead of doing uh, a, a stronger contraction, he did feel that, um, as opposed to Yonder using a stronger contraction, Levitt did feel that if you went long, longer in your contraction as opposed to stronger, it would be beneficial. Again, it depends on who, what research you to talk to, but the general consensus is research. Very good. Um, thank you very much once again, uh, uh, Janelle, and uh, um, I would like to thank everybody for attending tonight's uh, uh, webinar. Again, uh, if you want to get the 25% only once a year discount, go to handsonseminars.com and put the Turkey 25 on the um, uh, checkout page so you can get your 25% discount. Uh, uh, also, uh, in the Hands-On Seminars website, you can go under the webinar uh, section, and under the webinar section, you will be able to register in all um, uh, of our webinars. Our next webinar, actually, is coming up on, uh, uh, let me see, it is going to be on uh, um, December 4th, on Tuesday, December 4th at 7 p.m. this time. And uh, we are going to discuss um, when everything else fails, try, try advanced manipulative therapy with uh, Dr. Nakashima. And then we have uh, Richard Finn uh, on December 12th discussing trigger point therapy for the lumbar spine. Very important, uh, very interesting webinars. You can go online on handsonseminars.com and register. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, attending tonight's uh, event.